I recently got an Olight RN800 light for my bicycle. I'm hoping it's going to be a great daytime running light, and if I ever get caught when the sun goes down, light my way home with the powerful 800 lumens. It may be the answer to all my bicycle light problems. But seriously, Olight didn't give me this light to review it for you. I bought it with my own money. So I decided I'd make a video to show you the reasons that I bought it, what comes in the box, and I'll show you how it works outside in the daytime and nighttime. The video is also going to show you how it mounts onto your bike. Olight decided to use a mounting system that's very familiar to avid cyclists out there, but it's got a couple of quirks that I'd like to point out. There's a lot of stuff to cover in this video, so let's get started. Drum roll, please. First up, the charging port and the cable. Usually not a showstopper when you buy something, but this light uses the newer USB-C that's becoming very popular. I like USB-C because I don't have to worry which end of the cable is up. Just plug it in and it works. Unlike the micro USB cable you see on the right hand side, you have to know which way is up, otherwise you can damage your device. Oh well, I guess I need another micro USB cable. When I was reading over the website, they mentioned that the USB-C is capable of high current and charging the light in just two hours. I like that, that's pretty quick. And the other thing they mentioned is because of USB-C, you can use the light as a power bank to charge up things like your phone or your Garmin computer. I figured that could come in handy, especially out on a ride. Olight claims the light has a runtime of two hours at full brightness of 800 lumens. In my test, have a look at the clock here, it lasts two hours and one minute. I'm very pleased with that, it actually meets the manufacturer's claim. That's a good sign. The other modes last even longer. At 400 lumens, it lasts four hours, and at 200 lumens, it lasts eight hours. The flashing modes last even longer. Flash mode one has a simple blinking pattern at 400 lumens, it'll last you nine hours. Flash mode two has a strobe-like pattern at 800 lumens, that'll last you seven hours. That's a total of five different lighting modes. And the light also has another unique feature that I've never seen on any other light. They call it anti-dazzle light dividing design. It's supposed to reduce glare to oncoming traffic. I like the idea. You can see it in the lens here. There's these lines at the top. Olight has a nice diagram to illustrate how it works. Let me show you. If you look at the top of the diagram, you can see how the design is supposed to diffuse the light and not blind oncoming traffic. The lower diagram shows what it's like without it. Hey, why don't we have a look at this thing, eh? Okay, time to unbox the light, and as you see here, here's the, the box in itself. Uh, the box has got a primo feel to it. It actually doesn't feel like you're going to be buying a bicycle light. It feels like you're going to be buying a brand new expensive phone. And when you look around the box, you see the name all the way around it. Uh, on the back, it's got all the specs. And the side here, I'm noticing there's a, a two-year warranty for this light. Let's get the wrapping off and see what I get. Let me try to get this box open. Uh, which side is it? Oh, it opens from the bottom up. Oh, wow. There's a couple of magnets holding this cover closed, so we'll open the cover. And uh, they're greeting us with this message that says, Thank you for being part of the Olight family. Your support is why we do this. Enjoy. Well, that's a nice touch to be welcomed by a bicycle company. I've never had anything like that. Uh, let's take the uh, lid off. Oh, these are some instructions. I'll, I'll read those later. So let me just take this off and we'll get to looking at what's inside. Uh, looks like a mount and the light. So let me take out the mount. This actually looks like a, a Garmin mount. Next, uh, let's get the light out. This is the thing I purchased. It definitely has a primo feel to it. Um, the box says it's made of a supreme aluminum alloy and it does feel like it's well made. Uh, that bigger battery gives it a nice weighty feel to it. Underneath, uh, this looks like a, a Garmin mount. And if you look, there's a couple of Allen screws. I guess this is interchangeable if you wear it out or whatever. So let's see what else we get. I'll take this off. We get a few more items here. Okay, we got uh, a USB-C cable, a few straps. I guess these are for the mount. Uh, they're varying length, so um, you can put them anywhere on your bike. And the nice thing is these things actually are flexible. So I guess they'll wrap around any type of arrow shape you'd have on your bike. Now you also get an Allen key. Uh, here's another uh, Garmin 
GoPro mount. Oh, interesting. So you could use this uh, mount with a GoPro mount that you might you want to put on a handlebar or something, and then you could uh, just mount the light on top of it. And oh, look at this at the bottom of the box. Uh, more of a message from the people at Olight. They're saying thank you for me buying it. And that's uh, that's pretty good. This paper here, their instructions. Uh, now the light has a, a water rating of IPX6. It's not exactly waterproof. Eh, close enough. Uh, at least I know if I get rained on or whatever, this thing's not going to short out and then uh, basically die on me. Looking at the charging port, I don't see how to charge another device. Um, this, this unit is supposed to be a power bank that can charge another device like your phone, but I, I don't understand where I would plug in the cable. Now, oh, okay, I just read over the instructions quickly. The cable is not included in this box. It's a special cable you need. All right, we've checked out the features. We've unboxed it. Let's take it out for a road test. Let's put the light on the bicycle. Olight gives you two ways to do that using a Garmin mount. You'll recognize it if you're an avid cyclist. For those of you who don't know what a Garmin mount is, Garmin, the GPS company, started making GPSs for bicycles and they developed their own mounting system to put it on the bike. The system's real easy to use. Olight decided to jump on the bandwagon and use the same simple mounting system for their light. It looks like a good idea, but I got some reservations about this. You'll see what I mean as the video goes on. I decided to take the light out for its inaugural ride using that Garmin GoPro adapter. It slid right into the Garmin mount I have on my bike. As I was moving along, I hit a really rough patch of road. And then I noticed a strange vibration coming from my handlebars. I looked down and I noticed the mount was vibrating the light. When I got home, I decided to inspect the mount a little closer. It's flimsy and feels like it's going to break. I don't think they designed this to go over rough terrain while it's mounted on your bicycle. It might be better suited to mounting on your helmet. At least your body can act like a shock absorber and take all the stress away from the mount. Since that didn't work out, I decided to try the other mount included in the box with the straps. It requires a little assembly, but it's not too difficult. I put the mount on my handlebars and tightened it down with the Allen key. While riding with this mount, the light felt like it was securely in place. But for whatever reason, I had this feeling that the light was just going to come out of the mount and fall to the ground. And it did. But not how you might be thinking. Let me explain. One day I was loading my bike up into the car, getting ready to go join up with a bunch of friends for a ride. I bumped the O-light, and sure enough, it dislodged itself from the mount and came crashing down to the ground. I wasn't feeling great that day. I can't believe I'm the only one who's crashed a new piece of gear when they were loading their bike up into the car. Has that happened to you? Why don't you comment below and share your story? We can all share in the misery. I hope you can come to appreciate the reservations I have about using the Garmin system for this light. I mean, Garmin makes bicycle lights too, and they don't even use the system for that. But if you're going to end up using this system, Olight, why don't you do what Garmin does? They include a lanyard with all their GPS products. Do you think the engineers at Garmin figured there might be a remote chance whatever you put in the mount can come dislodged? At least you have a little bit of protection from it crashing on the ground. Since there is no tether in the box, I decided to hack one onto the light myself. If you want to see how I did it, I got a video on my channel. Check it out. If you liked the video so far, why don't you share it with your friends? And if you want to show your appreciation, give me a like with the thumbs up. Let's see how the light performs outside. First up, in the daytime. And I'm going to compare it to this bargain basement Amazon light I bought last year. Now the Amazon light performs fairly well, especially to be seen at nighttime. And in the daytime, it doesn't do that bad a job. What I'm going to do here is show you how the lights perform at different distances away from the camera. On the left side is the Amazon Wise Tiger light. And on the right side is the Olight RN800. Our first distance is 30 meters. Both lights are flashing and they do the job of making you visible on the road. If we're going to ask ourselves the question, which one is brighter, that has to go to the RN800. Let's move it up to 60 meters. They're both still visible, and the Olight definitely wins out on brightness. Now let's move it up to 90 meters, and you're starting to see the limitation of the Amazon light. It's pretty well invisible. Remember the reason I bought the Olight is because I ride out in the country, and I want cars to notice me from further away. Well, when the sun goes down, the moon comes up, and that means it's nighttime. We're going to test the light at night. 
the RN800 bills itself as a bicycle headlight. I'm going to test the light at all the three different light settings. The first one is going to be low at 200 lumens. Let me give you some perspective of the distance. That road sign all the way down the road on the right hand side, it's about 65 meters away from the camera. I picked this road to show you how the light performs in darkness without any light pollution from street lights and the like. Looking at the road, it doesn't do that bad a job lighting up the roadway and things to the side of the road, like those branches on the left hand side that are encroaching on the roadway. I'll give you a chance to have a look at the photo and decide for yourself. Now I'm going to put it to the medium setting, which is 400 lumens and lasts 4 hours. Immediately you get a better view of the road. Look at the left hand side. Remember those branches that were kind of encroaching onto the road? Look how thick they are. Now that's not something I would want to ride through. At least I can steer my way around it because I can see it. And you'll also notice we're starting to light up things above us. Have a look at the little branch in the middle of the road. Now I'm going to put it to the high setting, which is 800 lumens, and it lasts you about two hours. And as expected, you can see way more on the roadway. Have a look at those parking curves that line the sides of the road. If you look way down the road, you notice the road is actually starting to turn. We couldn't see that with the low and medium setting. Another thing, look above. Remember that little tree branch? It's actually a big tree branch that's grown over the road. Now something else happened while I was filming and I thought I was going to have to reshoot the whole scene again, but it actually worked out into my favor and I want you to see it. Look way down the road. You can sort of see a couple of things moving. And as they're getting closer, there are actually two people walking their dog. I was very impressed that the Olight could light up things that far away. It's about 100 meters. Now let me pull up the split screen here that shows all three different modes side by side. It'll give you a chance to compare how much each one lights up the road and what might be suitable for you. Now let's sum up the Olight and I'll tell you what I think about it. Am I happy with it? Absolutely. The light was a bit on the pricey side, but when I compared it to the better quality be seen lights, like the ones you see here, I thought this was the better value. Because not only am I getting a great daytime running light that I've been looking for for so long, but I also got a light that's capable of lighting my way in the dark if I ever get caught out on a night ride, which I don't do very often, but it's nice knowing I got a light that can handle it. Now the only thing I don't like about this light is the mount. As you've seen in the video, it does have some shortcomings. In order to overcome them, I hacked the lanyard onto the light. If you want to see how I did that, check out the video on my channel. And that's my review of the Olight RN800. If you like the video, why don't you show your appreciation, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of these videos, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you soon.